in the marketing department here. I've been doing that going on seven years and change or so. Um, so quite a while. Um, you guys are all here because you want to grow your creative businesses. You want to have more fruitful and obviously revenue positive. Uh, 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 maybe you're a painter. Maybe you're a photographer. Maybe you're a creative. And you know you need to start doing things differently so that the business gets on the right trajectory and starts growing. And you're in the right place because that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, agenda for the session. We are going to start off. Um, up top with a video I recorded on one of these sessions a couple of weeks ago or a month ago now or so. And it is my, if you want to make it in this business, you don't have to get a whole lot right as long as you don't get these things wrong. At a high level, there's some things like the business model and the fact that you need to sell direct and how you approach your marketing and some of the other important things to look at. And so we are going to start off with that video. During the course of the video, I am going to be mentioning reports and videos and PDFs and books uh, and the like. And if you look at the bottom of your Zoom window, now there's two of me, that's annoying. Uh, there's a chat box, right? And if you click the chat box, it pops out. We can throw links in it. So if you guys are chatting in there, what's up, Bob? I'll get to your question in a bit. Um, and you can click on those links if you're so inclined. Otherwise, um, if, you're, if you don't want to do that, you can certainly, that's really funny, Jason. I was wondering whether or not that was you. Now, now you're going to make me laugh this whole session. Um, I'm going to also send you, after this whole thing is over, a link to a web page that has a video for the day and then also a, um, has all the links and stuff, so don't feel like you need to click on any of the things. But we will start off with the video. After that's done, I will rant for a little bit, and then um, we will get into everything else. And excited to have you guys. April, go ahead and start the video. My name is Patrick. I uh, run the marketing department here at Art Storefront. I've been doing that for about six years now. And that means I've been working um, on solving the problem that is how do you sell art or photography um, by best leveraging marketing and digital marketing in particular. And it's an interesting problem to work on. There's, you know, there's, there's not that many, you know, Art marketing agencies, for instance, right? Because it's a very, very hard problem to solve. Selling art and photography is not like selling every other item out there. Um, a lot of tradecraft, a lot of nuance to it. In addition to that, I've been running three of these sessions since a little bit before the pandemic. So, you know, you're in a couple of months now. I don't believe that there's another human being on the planet that talks to more artists and photographers on a week in, week out basis. I have now at this point heard it all, seen it all, uh, you know, niche selection, uh, uh, pricing, sales, Facebook ads, branding, how to negotiate with the galleries, pricing, markup. Sh I, I, have, I have heard and been through all of it over the last year. And in addition to that, we have uh, like a little bit over 5,500 customers now. And one of the things that we, we do a great deal of is studying the ones that sell the best and studying quite in depth. Uh, for instance, Who's capturing the most emails? How are they doing that? <clears throat> Excuse me. Who is the best on Facebook? Who is the best on Instagram? What are they posting? What kind of activity are they getting there? Who is selling the most art period? Who is selling the most classes? Who is selling the most originals? Who's selling the most commissions? Metal prints, canvas prints. And you do all of that collectively. And why, why am I bringing all of this up? I think I can help you. I think, I think today's Q&A after, after I'm done with the presentation can be insanely valuable. I think if you're struggling with something, I probably have a solution that can put you on the path. And I mean that in the biggest non-sales pitch way ever. I don't care if you ever do business with art storefronts, if you ever become a customer, I want the session to be valuable. Um, I wanna try to get you on a path to, to growing your art business to where you want it to be. I honestly believe that I can help you. So the Q&A will happen sort of after the presentation and love for you to think about whatever questions you have, whether you've never sold your art before and you're just trying to get into it, uh, whether you had robust sales pre-pandemic and the pandemic crushed you, um, whether you're struggling with a, a question of knee selection, what style should you be doing, or you're struggling with you know, how to price your work, or you're struggling uh, with how to get attention uh, to your work, which let's be honest, 100% of you guys are struggling with that. Every single solitary artist and photographer is struggling with that. But point being, um, have your questions ready and we'll get into the Q&A after the fact. But I wanna start with sort of this new concept that I've come up with and I call it the art selling pyramid, okay? And I sort of stole it from um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I don't know if you've seen this pyramid, right? But 
and Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, you've got the physiological needs at the bottom, right? And the concept of the pyramid is you have to sort the blocks on the bottom before you can even contemplate sorting the blocks on the top. And the physiological needs are first, right? We have to eat, we have to sleep, we have to do that daily. That has to happen every single solitary day before we can even contemplate working on safety and shelter and money. And then you go up the thing and it's love and belonging and esteem and self-actualization. You can become a great person and all of that jazz. So let me give you the art selling pyramid, okay? Borrowed from Maslow. Same thing, pyramid, got to sort the bottom blocks, up we move. And the bottom block, the first block is attention. And I know, without equivocation, that every single solitary person on this Zoom call has an attention problem. What is attention? It is the eyeballs that you need to be able to sell your work. It is people knowing who you are, seeing your work, uh, interacting with you. And we live in a, you know, in, in, in a world right now where attention is the currency of the land. It's not dollars, it's attention. You have the attention, you can do anything. Without it, um, you're not in the game. It, d does the best art that's being created get sold? No. The best art that's being created that gets seen gets sold. And attention is every single solitary one of our problems. And just like in Maslow's Pyramid, you have to sort it daily. You have to be working on getting more of it daily. It is no different than eating and sleeping. And I look at this little pyramid and, you know, a, a perfect way for me to explain it. Do you know who some of the most powerful women, not just in the United States are, but in the entire world are? It's the Kardashians. You want to know why? They have attention. Okay. Any one of those women... Any of those surgically enhanced women could decide to start painting stick figures tomorrow and sell $35 million worth of art in the first year. Why? Because they have attention, okay? They understood what the, the currency of the land is. When you have the attention, you can do anything. Attention comes in two forms, rented and owned. Rented are YouTube subscribers and Instagram fans and Facebook followers, any social media followers you have on any of those sites. Why is it rented? It's rented because you don't own it. They can change the rules at any time. It's still very important, but it's rented. The other kind of attention, the owned attention, really email addresses, most importantly. Secondarily, snail mail. Um, and for some people to do text message marketing, it's phone numbers. But you have to work on building your attention day in, day out. It is a quotidian job. And ultimately, it's the biggest problem that every single solitary one of you on here have. Some of you think you have a website problem. Some of you think you have a pricing problem. Some of you think you have a problem negotiating with galleries. You can't even have any of those problems until you solve the attention problem. The attention problem is the whole ball game. And when you understand it, you start getting intentional. You start working at it. It is no different than eating and sleeping. What did you do to acquire more attention for your work today? If you're not working on that, then you can't even have any of the other problems. Um, Next block, okay, after we solve the attention situation, we're working on it, it's a constant battle, it never ends. The, the outside of this block uh, is number one and two here, and then I'm gonna get into the block. Number one is the business model, okay? I believe that an artist or a photographer, if they want to build a successful business, has to understand the business model. The business model is selling direct, by which I mean you, the artist, the photographer, selling directly to your end customer. You retain the data on your end customer such that you are able to market to that customer in perpetuity. Many, many people, the way that the industry worked traditionally forever was people that did, did, did not retain this information. They sold through galleries, or maybe they did the show in their circuit, but they weren't the best at keeping up with these people and marketing to them in perpetuity. I got this book that I cite all the time, and it's by Wyland. Uh, he's the, Wyland is the whale guy, okay? And don't worry, I'm gonna send you links to this. Um, but he wrote this book, he sells it directly on his website. He's, he's, depending on who you talk to, he's the number one selling artist in the entire United States, probably even the world, to be honest with you, because of, of his business model and what he's done. And he talks in that book about this concept called a collector list, okay? And for Wyland, a collector list are buyers of his art that sell, or that buy in upwards of seven plus pieces over the course of a lifetime. And he treats this collector list like VIP. They are, his collectors might as well be staying in the Four Seasons. He reaches out, he, he gives them special access to things. He likes their social media posts and he continues to build that list, okay? And fundamentally, it is one of the single solitary most important things any art or photography business can have. 
collector's surface. You market to them in perpetuity. Your prices continue to go up. They go along for the ride. Some of these people will buy in upwards of 20 and 30 and 40 pieces throughout the course of your life. And if you are not building that list, it's sort of like you're working a job and you're not putting any money away in a retirement account. It's almost like a 401k that just pays every single solitary year. And I can go into some detailed examples, but the goal is you come out with a new series. Uh, you, have a, you have a show, right? Uh, whether it's a photographic series or, or, or it's a, a, the series that you painted. You'll start out and your collector list will maybe buy 2% of the show or 5% of the show. And your goal is just to build that list such that the percentage of the work that they buy goes up and up and up. And I've seen customers that I've worked with recently where 40 to 50% of the show is bought before anyone even sees it by their collectors, just gone. So you created 20 pieces, 10 are gone instantaneously because you have been cultivating a collector list because you understand the business model, okay? And it is, I mean, we're gonna get into it, but it is so fundamental. And I've been doing this for a long time now, okay? I've talked to a lot of people and it breaks my damn heart because on a regular basis, people are coming on these calls, okay? And they're in their late 40s, late 50s, late 60s, late 70s. They are at the top of their game. They have honed their craft to the greatest it's ever gonna be. And guess what? They didn't understand the business model. And guess what? They didn't keep a collector list. And so guess what? The pandemic hit and all their offline revenue sources, poof, are gone. And they're coming on this call and they're going, Patrick, and this is how I envisioned it. They had the corner office, floor to ceiling windows, the giant executive desk, the big leather chair. And I'm telling them, I'm sorry, you're out of there and you have to go back to the mail room and you're pushing the cart because you did not cultivate this list. Okay, you did not keep a collector list. You did not work on your marketing. You did not understand the business model. What do you have now? You have nothing. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, wait the pandemic out? Like half the galleries are closed. The ones that are still open are renegotiating the split from 50-50 to 60-40 because they have 100 different artists that they wanna pick from. Go back on the show in their circuit. That's wonderful. That does not pay if it's not at 100% attendance. How long is it gonna take for the show and third circuit to get back to 100% attendance? We don't know, but it's not gonna be instantaneous, right? So really, really passionate about the business model, really, really passionate about the collector list. I, don't, I, th I think the minute you understand that, you're, you're, you, boy, are you in a great place. Boy, are you in a great place. You're building it, it takes time. Okay, that's the outer shell. The inside of the block, three ways to sell art. There are three ways to sell art, okay? Every single solitary artist, my argument, and photographer needs to understand the three ways to sell art and needs to be applying them in their business. Number one, best way to sell art. Trick question of sorts. Everyone knows the best way to sell art. It's in person, face to face. It always has been, it always will be, okay? In person, face to face is the best way to sell art. Anytime you have the ability to sell art that way, you do that. Problem, we are all of us geographically fixed on this planet. We all have to sleep. We can't have 15 conversations at once. So the third way to sell art, and I say third because it's the least important, is via your website. You absolutely have to have a website. Uh, the website solves for these problems. Uh, when you're asleep, 15 people at a time, and for many of the geographic problems. The second way to sell art, okay, the newest way to sell art, the one the entire art selling world is trying to figure out right now, uh, uh, the greatest advancement in selling art since forever is exactly what we're doing right now. It is selling art via live video in either a one-to-one -one fashion or a one-to-many fashion. A one-to-one -one fashion. I go to Antonio's website. Antonio, these pieces are very interesting. What is that one behind you? I would like to buy it. Can we talk about it? Antonio goes, Patrick, no problem. Let me set up a Zoom call with you. I'll show you a couple of pieces and we can talk about it. I can get to know you. That is the one-to-one -one fashion. The one-to-many fashion, okay, which is mega interesting as well, is this concept of a live art show, okay? And if my, what am I doing, there we go. So I have a couple examples of this I'm gonna show. Um, this is a painter in his garage studio. He has some works that he's trying to sell. He is streaming this to Instagram. He is streaming this to Facebook. He's streaming it to YouTube. He is holding the works up. He's talking about them. People can leave comments. They can purchase them. This is one particular type of these sales. Uh, this is this is a, a a customer and a good friend of ours named Matthew Locke. We run a number of these different initiatives with him. In addition, okay, to this this concept of doing it in your studio, what happens if you have an actual show? He had an actual show in the middle of the pandemic. Now attendance was limited. Now, a bunch of people couldn't travel, so the attendance of the show was light. He still sold a bunch of stuff. 
the day after the show. What do we do? We turn the cameras on. He grabs a glass of wine, wears this ridiculous sleeveless shirt. I always make fun of him for the sleeveless shirt, so I can't help it. I think it's fun. Um, and what is he doing? He's walking through the show, and you notice people are leaving, leaving comments. We're highlighting the comments. He's walking through the show. He's explaining each of the pieces, okay? So my point in showing this is this is the new, and I've got another one here too. I can just, I can rattle through some of the examples. This is crazy, but this is absolutely the future of selling art. It is the next best way. And when we contemplate, um, let me mute this, and let me but I'll just give you something to stare at while I rant here. You know, if selling art in person, face-to-face -face, is the best way to sell art, then okay. Everything that we do digitally tries to get as close as possible to that, okay? And in what would be the ideal way to sell art? Let's just say it's an art gallery that you have that you own in your hometown, okay? People can come in, they can know you, have a conversation, they can buy the art. For all the people that can't geographically do that, the next best way is this via live video. Again, one-to-one -one or one-to-many, your group show, right? And it's so close to the real thing, it's amazing. You don't have to leave your hometown. They get to know you. They get to interact with you. They feel like they have a bond with the artist. It is the future, full stop. And what's interesting is the entire world is trying to figure this out right now, okay? The entire art selling world is trying to figure it out. Your industry doesn't have a lot of reports. There's two big ones, okay? There is the Art Market 2021 report. They do one of these each year. It's from Art Basel and UBS. I'm gonna send you links to the report. I want you to read it. It's amazing, it's incredible. The, 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 the disclaimer on it is these guys report on the top 1% of the art selling market, right? Like the highest of the high end. The top auction houses in Christie's. The top auction houses and the top art selling dealers and the top galleries and stuff. But the report is still very, very relevant, okay? And, and the link will send you. You can, you can download the entire report, which I recommend you do. I think you'll find it really insightful. Um, but they have these key findings too, which is like this snazzy little web page they built to talk about it. And... So I can go in here, I can explore this thing. We've got some lovely little graphs. But you read this report, and what they call it, and I'll quote, um, Chapter 5 looks at the online art market and the rapid evolution in sales in 2021. The chapter shows how the dealer sector shifted sales online in 2020 and the development of online viewing rooms, OVRs. Do you know what online viewing rooms are? A snooty way to talk about a Zoom call. Okay, a snooty way to talk about exactly what we are doing right here, right now. So this is the future. Incredible fashion. I, I, I always feel like a bit of a Yahoo to share numbers, but I'm going to share numbers because it's going to give this whole entire thing some teeth. Okay, so Matthew Laka, longtime customer, great friend, normally does the full dog and pony gallery shows in the middle. So this was on June 9th, 2020. He did two of these over a 15 period, a 15 day period. He sold 62 pieces for a little bit over $30,000 Canadian. From his basement, no 50-50 split, direct, didn't have to leave. Uh, this is his garage studio, it's where he paints, didn't even, leave his, didn't even leave his living room. This gal, Meg, also a customer, she was moving studios, legitimately moving studios from one studio to another. This was about a month ago that we ran this. And, you know, just to underscore my collector list, okay. This particular sale was teased on a Friday. On Monday, she emailed her collector list. Her collector list bought 46% of the show. She sold a little bit less than, I think, 76 different pieces for $15,000. Now, the pieces in this particular show were like the color studies, right? They weren't like the full buttoned up pieces. I'm trying to get to one where she's actually holding one. You know, they were color studies, they were sketches, they were smaller works. Right, um, you know, stuff that was just involved in it. But the, the the point is, this is absolutely the future. It is it is such an incredible way to sell art and photography. The entire world is trying to figure it out. You know, you get you get people using various different. You know, at the snooty end, it's OVRs, online viewing rooms, or or the art fairs and shows that are trying to keep the booth deposits. What's their line that they love? We're going to have a virtual art show, right? Everyone is trying to figure this out right now. I do not know what floor this particular elevator is going to go to my guess is it's going to go very 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 high what i'm saying is right now this elevator is on the ground floor and the doors haven't even closed yet the whole world's trying to figure this out and there is so much trade craft to it i can't even begin to tell you um you know this particular zoom call i have all you guys in a zoom call right now right 
This is also being streamed to two YouTube channels, to a Facebook channel, to Twitter, uh, uh, all at once, all simultaneously. Everyone is trying to figure this out, and it is the most effective way to sell art, period. And so step one is becoming aware of it. Step two is starting to practice it and put it into practice. And I guarantee you there's probably not a single solitary person on this call that is doing it. And you know, people ask, what is it that you do at Art Storefronts? We teach our customers how to sell art and photography in the most uh, uh, advanced way as possible. And because I don't care, 90%, I, I tell people these things, 90% of the people will never, ever even do it. So I don't even care to give away the tradecraft. I'll give away the tradecraft right now. So my sleeveless associate here, Matthew, is using wireless Apple AirPods connected to his iPhone, which has this stream going out live on Instagram. We are leveraging software that is streaming it, that's putting in this little this little title here, right? And his logo and you know the banner at the bottom to inquire and it's pulling the comments in. So cell phone, ear pods connected to Instagram on the phone, laptop, uh, computer, Facebook, personal Facebook, YouTube account, all of that goes down all at once simultaneously. And you can see there's numbers here if the number two thing goes away. He's even got little numbers here. Why? Because the people on Instagram can't see the graphics that we have on the screen. And so they need to know, okay, was that number two or number three? You can't really see it, but it's like right behind here. There's like a little thing. Yeah, there it is. See, number five. And we're on number five. So everyone knows that. There's a million little things like that. What is the best combination of the technology? How do you announce it? What do you do during the course? And don't worry, I'm going to send you guys, excuse me, I'm going to send you these shows after the fact so you can watch them and and pick up what you like. But this is absolutely the future, you guys, and it is completely changing the game, and you don't need to leave your house, and there are no doofies, and there's no loading up the car, and, and driving somewhere, and staying in some crappy hotel, and eating crappy food, and then coping you're gonna see an ROI. There is no limit to the amount that you can run. It is the most uh, uh, beneficial use, highest ROI use of an artist or photographer's time uh, uh, I could even imagine right now. It's not even close. And again, whole world's trying to figure it out. So those are the three ways to sell art. I gotta go back to my pyramid. You have to have, you have to be running all three uh, and, and you have to be doing all three consistently all year long. So we start by constantly gathering attention. We start by recognizing the business model, collector list, as well as the three ways to sell art. Then we get to the top of the pyramid, which is everything else. What do I mean everything else? You have a brick and mortar gallery that's working out for you, that's bringing in revenue to your business, fantastic. We love revenue. I have never met a revenue source I don't like. Keep it going. But it's in addition, okay? Not in lieu of working on attention. Not in lieu of working on the three ways to sell art and building your own collector list. What if it's an online gallery? Maybe it's Saatchi or Fine Art America or Redbubble or Etsy or any of the others. Is it bringing in revenue? Fantastic. I've never met a revenue source I don't like but it's in addition to everything else, okay? It's in addition to getting your own attention. It's in addition to the three ways of selling art. So too, if you're doing the show in Thera Circuit, we love the show in Thera Circuit. It's fantastic. I can't wait for it to come back. It is a great way to build attention, uh, but it's in addition to those two. You understand this pyramid, okay? You start working on this pyramid, and you are going to be on the path towards building a successful art or photography business. You don't and you don't control the rules, you do not control the stakes, you can have the rug ripped out from underneath you at any point in time, which I've seen again and again and again on these calls. And you know, one of the, one of the things that no one talks about, okay, and, and, and does not get mentioned a month, uh, enough, three of these a week for a year and a half, okay? That's not hyperbole, that, that many of them. Every single solitary week, there are people in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and I would say once every two weeks, somebody in their 90s comes in on these calls asking questions. And so why do I bring that up? Understand the perspective of how long you guys are gonna be artists and photographers selling your art or photography, okay? You guys don't go through midlife crises. It doesn't happen to creatives. You don't decide all of a sudden you're gonna stop being a painter and you're gonna go rent jet skis in Florida for the summer and that's gonna be your job, okay? So when you have the perspective figured out that you are going to be working at this for the rest of your life in your 90s in many cases, you, it underscores how important it is to understand this pyramid. 
to start working on this pyramid. And guess what? It's not going to be easy at first if you're just getting started. It's going to be a pain in the butt. You know, I'm looking at Rick there, and Rick, if you have not been building that list the entire time, and I'm telling you, you have to learn how to email market and social media market, and you need to start doing it on a regular basis, that can be frustrating, but it's not frustrating when you got another 25 years of growth in this doggone business. So what does our storefronts do at the end of the day? We teach you how to do the pyramid. Yeah, we give you a website, and yeah, we put you into a university where there's no graduates because the learning never stops. That's really, the, in, in a nutshell, who we are, what we do. In a nutshell of sorts, anyway. Um, <clears throat> so I want to show you. I want to show you something else that reflects. We our, can see our, it, Matt. Oh yeah. Sorry, I gotta get this thing out of the way. Thank you, April. Um, so I want to show you guys something else that sort of represents our latest and greatest thinking. But in terms of timing, you've got great timing right now because there's he, there's thir there's three huge art selling opportunities in the next thirty days, and I find that most artists and photographers are loosely aware of what they are or don't don't think they need to participate because it's you know it's just another holiday it's not the best one for my business but you have to get started you have to get started marketing you have to get started running sales and until you get on that train and still you start taking action nothing is ever going to change in your business but what, I'm, what i want to show you is a little bit different sort of interesting um last year we internally launched a marketing agency in-house at art store friends and it services just our clients and it started out with like a bunch of one-off services off the shelf to help you with various different things. Run a sales campaign for you, beef up your Instagram profile, uh, run your Facebook ads for you, do all of the marketing for you, right? And we sort of realized as we continue to evolve and get better is, is a business that you can't have one size fits all advice in this business in the slightest, right? You just can't. And so we are now starting to tailor all of our various different services for exactly where our customers are. And what's, what's interesting about this, why I'm showing this to you, is it represents our latest and greatest thinking. And you know, for all of our customers, we're running them through this map, okay, that I'm gonna show you in a sec and explain. Um, we're saying, if you wanna do all the work yourself, do it all yourself. Here, here is all the roadmap, here are the playbooks. The playbooks are step-by-step -step guides that teach you how to do the thing. Um, if you want to hire us to do it, you can hire us to do a portion of it. You can hire us to do all of it, but everyone has to do it because if you don't do it, it's putting the cart before the horse. Okay. It's putting the cart before the horse and it's a simple map and I'm going to explain it very, very briefly. And one, I want to show cause it's, it's the latest evolution of our thought, right? But two, it might, it, it might bring up some interesting conversations in a bit and we call it marketing assistant light. And it's really just a path, right? And the, and the, the whole thing says that you have to follow this step by step if you wanna give yourself the greatest chance at success. And I'm gonna go through it quickly and explain it to you. Is your website live? No, obviously we have to help you get your website live. So the service helps you do that. Is your website uh, meeting best practices? If the answer to this is no, we help you get there. What are best practices? You have to have price points under $100 on your site. Have to, very important. You have to have price points from 100 to 1,000. You also have to have price points above 1,000. If you're li slightly higher on the scale and you're selling like five to seven to 10 to 15, I want a price point on your site for 50,000. And this is important because it speaks to the entire socioeconomic bell curve in which everyone's followers fall into. You have people on the low end of the scale that are, that are, that are low on the socioeconomic scale. You have lower middle class, middle class, upper middle class, high net worth individuals. Every single solitary person that's marketing or has a following of any capacity whatsoever has people in that bell curve. So your site has to have products that speaks to each of them, okay? That's it, it, so important. You need to have a combination of open editions, limited editions, and originals, okay? There is some room for adjustment here, but this helps you both in price points and it helps you in scarcity, um, i.e. the limited editions and the originals. You really need to activate merchandise, okay? And we have a one-click integration with merchandise. The reason that you need to activate merchandise is because not everybody is ready to buy wall art right now today. They might not be ready to buy wall art for three years from now. They might not be ready to buy wall art until the fourth quarter of this year. But when you have merchandise, when you have something else to sell, by which I mean, yes, the coffee cups or the calendars or iPhone cases or magnets or throw pillows or yoga mats, whatever combination you choose, instead of somebody you doing marketing and somebody coming to your website and saying, I'm not ready to buy wall art. Oh, all they have is wall art. I'm going to leave. You have the opportunity to make a sale, earn a customer and have your art in front of their eyeballs until they're ready to buy wall art. Critically important. You have to turn on what are called order bumps and one click upsells. I hate this terminology, the internet invented this terminology, but the way that it works is I come to your website, I put something into the shopping cart, boom. Before I put in my credit card, I get hit with the prompt. And the prompt says, do you wanna add such and such to your order for an additional 25, 35, 45, 
It's if yes, click yes. And the the tail end, I can't even I don't even know which one is what, which order bumps one click up sales. I think that one's one click up sales. The order bumps is you put in the credit card, the transaction is completed, and then you land on a landing page. It says, Hey, do you want to add this to your order? Um, you know, thanks for your order. Can't wait to ship to you. Do you want to add this to your order? No brainer, right? And everyone's like, Ooh, that sounds fancy. Is it? Any, anyone been to a hardware store lately or an electronic store lately or the supermarket and when we're waiting in line and there are aisles or they snake us through aisles filled with tchotchke and cell phone cables and beef jerky and water and batteries and duct tape and whatever else, all it is is a play for AOV, a average order value. I believe everyone needs to be taking commissions. Whether you're a photographer, whether you're a painter, you need to be taking commissions. Whether you have any intention of taking the commissions or not, I believe you need to have a button on your website that says you're open for them because it's how you learn about new opportunities, new sales opportunities, new hot commodities that the market might want. And I believe everyone needs to have a sample of all of the media types on hand that they're offering. And I'm going to do show and tell here because it's important. This entire stack cost me $170. $170. And I have right now the ability on a Zoom call, on, on a webinar, on a live art show to show you what a paper print looks like. The fact that they're framed, that it's ready to hang. I can show you what a gallery wrapped canvas looks like, okay? I can show you the dimensions to it. I can show you what I like about the medium. I can show you what a metal print looks like, right? The fact that it's ready to hang and doesn't need a frame, how thin it is. I can show you how acrylic, right? Here's an acrylic print. Here's what an acrylic print looks like. It's also ready to hang. I can even show you wood. I don't care if you're selling wood or not. I don't even care if you want to sell wood, but if somebody wants wood, you're the subject matter expert. You better be able to show it, articulate it to me, show me why it's awesome and say, you know what? If you do want it, I'll get it for you. That is having your website set up correctly. Okay. Critically, critically important. Next on the map, do your social media sites meet best practices? Okay. If the answer to that question is no, then we need to get number one, your Instagram, and then secondarily your Facebook profile. The, the, what your profiles look like, okay, represents a minimum credibility barrier in today's day and age. It's no different when you're out and about town and you meet some big shot and you're like, I'm going to go look that person up on LinkedIn. It's no different than if you find a product out there in the market that you like that you go read the Amazon reviews, okay? If somebody gets into your ecosystem, however they get into your ecosystem, the first thing they're going to do is go to social media and either check out your Instagram or check out your Facebook. If either of those profiles do not look up to snuff, if either of those profiles have zero followers, if either of those profiles do not have regular posts, that looks like you're posting on a regular basis, you miss on the minimum credibility bar. Is it gonna ruin every sale? No, it's not, but there's gonna be a whole bunch of sales that are not gonna get over the line as a result of those, pro those profiles not being up to snuff and not having the latest and greatest content, okay? Once that's done, then we ask the question about whether or not you have MVT. MVT is defined as minimum viable traction. And we have a, we have a placeholder number in here, which is you need to have sold $1,000 in the last year. Combined sales, okay? If you sold $1,000, then there is a very good chance that you have a product the market wants. Your problem is just marketing. You need more eyeballs to it, right? And so we have an, we have an art marketing calendar, and we're essentially saying at the end of this map, you're just following our art marketing calendar, what we're telling you to do all year long. If the answer is no, if you've not had these sales, and minimum viable traction is somewhat subjective, right? We have a ton of customers that marketed all year long last year, and they sold $12,000. And they're like, you know what? I can't feed my family on $12,000. That's actually not a real business. This is a hobby, right? Or this is a side hustle. I would prefer to get this thing up to another level, the next level. And so in those cases, you don't have minimum viable traction because your goal for that business is $100,000 a year. And the subject material you have is not up to snuff. So then we go down on the map. No. Do you, do you have a minimum viable audience? Is your audience big enough? We say at a minimum, you need 250 people on your email list and 250 people on one social platform. Is that, is that gonna get you to where you need to go? Absolutely not. Should it be enough to generate $1,000 in sales? Yes, it should. If you don't have it, we help our customers generate those emails and they don't focus on anything else. They're 100% all in on generating the emails through a number of different techniques and tactics we have. Once that's done, you go right into a 30-day rapid test in which you're selling your art in various different capacities, the merch, some of the, some of the pieces for the next 30 days to see whether or not you can hit that $1,000 mark. If the answer to that at the end is no, it's time to execute the pivot playbook, by which I mean you need to try some new styles because the styles that you have, the subject matter that you have right now is not resonating. And if you think this is like a new idea, Pablo Picasso had 45,000 unsold works in his inventory when he died. 45,000 unsold works. What do you think he was doing? He was trying new things, trying new styles, some of which were duds, some of which didn't work, some of which he didn't even want to show the light of day. So 
this map is what we have in our entire customer base going forward. I don't believe there's any shortcuts. I don't believe there's any stopping and, and, and jumping to the next step and thinking you can jump to the next step. And it really does at a macro represent sort of our latest and greatest thinking. And you know, what's funny is that we have, we have a good deal of customers that are well over the six figure mark and some of them are breaking those rules and they got to where they got from however they got there, right? Could be a, a, a combination of galleries or maybe they did shows for a long time. Maybe they had a huge email list, but all, all everything on that map in our estimation and in years and years and years of doing this and in and, and years and years and years of experience and looking at sites and looking at the analytics and looking at the conversion rate all that whole map okay it represents stacking the deck in your favor to the best of the ability in today's digital landscape that's what you need you need it full stop so that represents the latest and greatest thinking that's what we're putting everyone through if anyone signs up this is what you're going to go right into right out of the gates and this is what you're going to be working on um and don't worry i know a bunch of people came late um i'm going to send you a replay on all of this so you don't have to stress out about that at all let's let's get into the q a a couple of different ways we do q a uh number one if we have a question and you're one of the brave ones with the camera on uh, thank you, Daniel. Appreciate it. By the way, I, I hope you ask a question because whatever office you have going on in there, I want to get a closer look. It looks really comfortable to me. But if, if you have a camera on and you have a question, all you have to do is raise your hand. Someone on my team will see it and they'll tell me. Um, for everybody else at the bottom of the Zoom window, there's this little reactions. It's like this little smiley face with a plus on it. If you click that, there's a way for you to raise your hand digitally speaking. And that lets me know like, hey, they have a question and then I can unmute you, you can come on. Uh, if you don't wanna turn your camera on and you just wanna ask via audio, you can absolutely do that. I hate being on video, I totally understand that. And by the way, I had, a, I had an eye procedure um, a couple of weeks ago and it still looks like I was in a prize fight. So that's why I'm wearing the sunglasses on inside. Um, so I, I wouldn't do that <laughs> otherwise. Um, you can throw com questions in the chat too, uh, if, you, if you've got that. And then if you're one of the ones watching on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter, I have uh, an ability to see your comments. I can pull those in. Uh, Jerry, I see your comment. Um, just go to the website. You can fill out a demo request form. But okay, Keith looks like he's got the first question. Today, I'm gonna unmute you, Keith. Uh, you just have to hit the mic icon, bottom left-hand corner, and, and then uh, ask away. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Um, thank you. Uh, how important, uh, when we're talking about social media best practices, uh, f Facebook and Instagram stores, shops to sell prints, things like that? Not at all, not at all. Like not what at do all. you think? Not, not at all, I hate them, I hate them. I hate them with a passion. And, and the, the, the reason is, um, you know how there was Craigslist? You remember Craigslist? You ever been on the site Craigslist? Keith, did I lose you? Uh -oh, I think he muted himself. So my Q&A will be work, work so much better if you can say, yeah, I've heard of Craigslist, and then and we can go from there. I'm going to meet you again, Keith. Okay, he said yes. So yes. You, you remember how there was Craigslist, and then Facebook looked at Craigslist and was like, you know what? Why do we need Craigslist? We'll just start Facebook Marketplace, right? And it cuts Craigslist completely out of the business. That's the way they look at everything, okay? They, and I, sh I gotta be careful because I'm stringing on their platform right now. But they, they, they're like, hmm, you have, a, you have a business here? Let me just go ahead and see because I have all the eyeballs and all the attention. Let me just see if I can start it and do it better than you, right? And so it's a slippery slope on where it starts. That's number one. Number two, you want, you want home court advantage. So when someone comes and they're in a buying mode and they're ready to buy art, you want them on your home court advantage where you can capture their email address, uh, find out who they are. And if you have one of our sites, obviously it's much better. So at a macro, no, I say absolutely not. At a micro, if that's the best you can do right now, it's not the worst. It's not the worst, right? It at least gives you something and you've got something up. So, you know, if, if, if I was just getting started and you know, it's gonna take me three months to get a website together and, in, and I could have my Facebook or Instagram shop hub in 24 hours. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. But it's suboptimal in the long run. You have, to, you have to get home court advantage. You have to be capturing the email addresses. Um, although I do, like, I do like Messenger and I think Messenger works pretty well in, in, in a number of different capacities. So there's that too. But yeah, we're, we're, we're all about get, get home court advantage so you know what's going on and you know, you, you have the greatest shot at it. So that's what I'd say. Does that answer all your questions, Keith? He muted again, so you might as well just put yes in the chat. But who else, guys? Questions? The only ones I can pick on are the ones. Okay, there we go. There we go, Jacqueline. Game one. Game one. I got you. Jacqueline definitely looks the part here, too, with her background, right? Like, this is this is a painter, okay? This is an artist. There's not anyone that needs to ask whether or not Jacqueline is the real deal. She's the real deal. You caught me on a full studio day, too, so I look great. So 
Um, I had a question about, um, you were talking about combination, open edition, limited edition, and originals. Yes. How do you find that balance, figuring out what should be limited edition, what should be open edition? There's literally, there's literally no secret recipe or no one size fits all. You, you, okay. approach, you approach it with a just ship it mentality, meaning I don't care if you throw darts, I don't care if you ask a significant other, I don't care if you put all the paintings down on the ground and see which one the cat walks on first, it doesn't matter. You just say, <laughs> I'm gonna get them in the water, I'm gonna get them in the water immediately, and you, could, you can differentiate things based on size, you can differentiate things based on media type, right? Like the limited edition can be a series of, of 12 of each, they're metal, they're hand signed with a little note on the back and those are the only ones that will ever be on metal in that size, right? And then you have the open editions and then the originals for you is pretty straightforward because obviously right. there's always an original. Uh, it's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit, you have to get a little more creative in terms of photography. But what, what the idea is, is like each one gives you a unique selling proposition, right? And there's some people that are just inherent, like as human beings, we are, we are, we have psychological triggers, one of which is scarcity, like it's going away, right? There's only so many of them, right? Um, it's why there's so many collectors out there of various different this, that's, and the others, and knickknacks. So you, what, what we see is the contrast of not having them versus having them, it increases the conversion rate of people just wanting to buy them because they're going away, right? And it also raises the perceived value. So they're, they're a great way to go. There's no wrong way you can do it. You just do them, like get them in the store today, done. Because I also do photography, and mm -hmm. that blew up last year for me at art shows, which has been great. Awesome. But then I'm get, I'm hitting that point of okay, how do I decide limited edition? Mm -hmm. Is it okay to do open editions and limited yes. editions on the same images? Yes, one hundred percent. I'm arguing with that. So. Yeah, the, the, okay. all the people that tell you not to do that have never sold any art before in their lives or their galleries, and they don't have your best interest in hand. Yeah. See, and then I work for I now work for a very international artist um mm -hmm. he's amazing mm -hmm. and everything is limited edition or yep. the original yeah and so that got me questioning oh, is, it, is this person selling is this person selling directly or are they only selling through galleries um directly and a lot with um park west which is a gallery i assume yeah yeah one of the biggest art dealers in the world and so. and they allow him to sell direct still that's awesome yeah that's that's awesome because that's not normal yeah, he I just of, I, he does a lot of commissions, um, and then a lot of work goes directly to them, and then some of it will get limited editions in the gallery. Yeah, I still I still even for him, even, and, and you don't have to give the name, but like what what in terms of yearly sales, where are they at? Um, ballpark, is, ballpark you, is fine. Ballpark is fine. I don't I don't know what his yearly is. I can mm. tell you, I just packed and shipped a original that sold for forty thousand, and it was an eighteen by twenty four inch canvas. Yeah. Yeah, so they're they're doing great. But my argument yeah. is like you don't need the galleries anymore, and especially if you're exactly. established, like you can totally do it all on your own. And it's like, okay, there's a forty thousand dollars sale in which he doesn't have any idea who purchased the work, so he can't market to him in the future. And he took a fifty percent haircut right out of the gates. Not 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 well. I mean, the 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 material cost in this case we're we're not sig significant, but there's there's one book I think you should have him read, and I love this book, and I talk about this book all the time, and it's called the Twelve Million Dollar Stuffed Shark. Okay. And let me, let me just pull it up on Amazon so we can see it. And it's like the curious case of the contemporary art market, the $12 million stuffed shark. And I would also recommend, and I'll have April put th both of these in the show notes, okay? So the $12 million stuffed shark, the curious case of contemporary art market, right? And this is 2010, so we sort of have to take it with, you know, adjusted for inflation, da 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 da, -da, -da and all that, right? In the book, and, and, and I should say at a very high level, the the the... High level gallery art market is one of the most opaque, shady industries in the history of mankind. They don't publish facts. They don't publish details. They don't tell anyone. They don't want to tell you who bought anything. They don't want to tell you who the collectors are. In fact, like um, Freakonomics, which April will also put in the chat and I'll send you guys after. Freakonomics just did a th three part um, podcast on the galleries. And it is on, on the art market, and it is phenomenal. By the way, they, anything those guys do is amazing. I, I, the, the guy is just so good at podcasting. So you should listen to that too. But here, here's where I want to go with this. So in, 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 in the $12 million stuff shark, and I realize it's a bit of a tangent, and then I'll get back to everyone's questions. 40,000 artists in residence in New York. 40,000 artists in residence in London at the time they did this survey, right? Out of the 40,000 in the two, less than a tenth of a percent are superstar artists out of that group. Superstar artists are defined over a million dollars a year in sales, 100% gallery representation. 
One tier below that are the ones making over 100,000 and making under a million gallery representation, right? In that bunch, in that bunch, it, it took the total percentage to like 1.1% um, of the 80,000 artists, right? The next tier down, the next tier down, which took the whole thing to 6%, were under $100,000 a year with some gallery representation, some not, spousal support or a side job, right? The gallery, the gallery relationship is a tenant farmer relationship. It just absolutely is. You get, you, 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 you get some money and you get maybe a roof over your head and when it's done, you leave with the shirt on your back and nothing else, right? So I would highly recommend to him, and it sounds like he's doing it direct, like the gold in this industry is a collector list. If he knew who uh -huh. all of his collectors were, there are multiple on that list that will go with him for the rest of his life, continue buying, continue buying, continue buying, continue buying, and it literally will take him two years of pain, okay? to start doing those sales on his own and to not have that gallery revenue to all of a sudden be able to capture a hundred percent of it and to have the interactions with all of those folks. And anyway, I'm, I'm, you're like, can we back, can we give it back to my problem here? Okay. Can we get, can we give back to my problem? Jack, what's telling me? I get it. But yeah, it infuriates okay. me. Um, I had another question. I'm trying to find my notes here. No problem. Um, I'm going to say when I get signed up, you were talking about utilizing live streaming through all the multiple yes. different platforms yes. all at once. I have no idea how to do that. No one has any idea how to do that. That's why you sign up. <laughs> so uh, so you guys have the tools that'll walk me through how to yeah, get all yeah. that stuff working yeah, yeah. in unison. Yeah, okay. yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll teach you the whole thing. Step one is just to get over the terror and fear of doing one for the first time. And the terror and fear is real. Is real. Yeah. Let me tell you for yeah. most people, right? <laughs> I it, was working on a drawing this morning. I was like, I should probably be live or something, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's baby steps though. Like, you know, everyone has the same reaction after the first one, which is like, oh my God, I had technical issues. I was terrified. My, my cat came in, my dog came in, I spilled wine, but you know what? I kind of had fun. And it's like, I have the same response every time. Great. Now go do a thousand of them, right? Now go do a thousand of them. And the, the, my one buddy that I used in the example, and this guy's crazy, crazy talented. He has massive celebrity collectors, like multiple names. Everyone knows that continue buying and continue buying he had a show pre COVID and this is, this is his work behind me. Um, he's got, you can't tell the imposter, but whatever, he's got crazy skills and he had the show. It was, and he's Canadian. He lives in, in Quebec and he had the show and the show is really, really good. And he sold, I think like 114,000 Canadian at the show, right? Which, which was pretty good. Blew out pretty much all of the pieces. I think for the most part, I'm going to go to a different background and had a really, really successful show. Then COVID came. Then he decided to pull a bunch of these like pieces that he had sitting in his basement shed that he did like eight years ago. And he's like, I'm going to have a basement art sale. And we ran the live art show with him, streamed it to Instagram, streamed it to Facebook, streamed it to YouTube. He has a decent YouTube following, most artists don't. And he sold, I, I can't remember what it was, was it 62 pieces for $47,000 over a 48 year, hour period? And he's like, okay, 112,000 Canadian, 50% haircut, and the gallery stiffed me on the shipping from where he was in, to Toronto. They didn't pay for it. So he had to pay for that too. Then some of the works he had to pay to get shipped back to him that didn't sell. And they were huge works on the show. I'm talking huge ones. And he's like, what am I doing? What am I doing? I just kept more of the money for less of the work. And it was on my older works. So I am so, I am so bullish. I am so incredibly blown away on the levels of success that I'm seeing with it. It's, it's, it's the greatest marketing technique or tactics since sliced bread. It really is, at least right now. I have one more. Yeah, please. Sorry. Please. Um, my other MS fear Mm -hmm. is um, if my fine art, which you can see several in progress behind mm -hmm. me, blows up too fast. Like, is that a thing? Like, right now I'm working full time for that gentleman's art gallery. Yes. Um, and I just got promoted on his custom framework and everything else. But awesome. So I'm balancing working full time so that I can pay the bills and keep my house and trying to produce new work. Yes. You and about 9 million other artists. <laughs> right. <laughs> so... I guess I guess my fear is if the, all of my originals happen to sell, am I going to end up falling back because I don't have another original available? No, no, you're gonna you're gonna photograph okay. all of them so we can sell prints. And if you if that does right. happen to you, um, I'm gonna fly in. We'll celebrate <laughs> dinner dinner and drinks on me, okay? And and I mean that on like, a, do you have any idea how incredible that would be if that happened? No, no other yeah. context than that. Like celebrate I'm, I'm, that moment. <laughs> oh, that is when you raise your prices and you get right back into it. And trust me. 
cross that bridge when you get to it. I love the optimism, right. but cross that bridge when I, you get to it. I always think about everything. I'm like, okay, if it yeah. doesn't do anything, if it does, what, what, what do I do if it does this? So that's yeah, yeah. where my brain is. So. Yeah. Today's problems for today. Do, don't, yeah. don't focus on anything else but the selling it, which is the most difficult thing to do. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. So next up is Deborah. Go ahead, Deborah. Can you hear me? I sure can. All righty. How often, I wanted to know how often you should send out ads like on Facebook, social media, emails um, before you annoy the heck out of your buyers. Yes. Yes. Very good question. And you realize how hypocritical someone in my position is responding to this. Are you on my email list, Deborah? Yes. How many emails do I send? A lot. A lot. Okay. Which means Watch you have to take this me. advice. You have to take this advice with an extreme, <laughs> extreme grain of sand, right? Because um, we obviously send a tremendous amount. I'm obviously not advocating that you send that many. First, we have to define what ads are. Ads are not boosting posts. Okay. The 11th commandment in the Bible should have been thou shall not boost posts. Artists and photographers do not boost posts, do not ever boost posts, do not let your friends boost posts. There's no boosting posts, okay? That's number one. Number two, once you reach a certain threshold of sales, okay? And again, I have to throw out a number, but I would say if you sold $2,000 directly from your website, you are ready to start doing warm ads on Facebook and Instagram, okay? Warm ads on Facebook and Instagram are not ads targeted towards people that are in their 30s that live in Southern California and like surfing, okay? Those are cold ads. Those people have never met you. Warm ads are ads to people that have visited your website, that have interacted with one of your social posts in the last 365 days, that are on your email list, um, that are on any list that you have, or previous customers. All of those people get put in one bucket we like to call the kitchen sink, and they're shown ads 365 days a year. And it's not annoying in the slightest because all it is, this is no one ever talks about this, but this is just truth. Facebook and Instagram have a free plan and a paid plan. They don't publish the difference between the free plan and the paid plan. Everyone signs up for the free plan. On the free plan, a thousand people follow you and three of them see your posts. On the paid plan, a thousand people follow you and 900 of them see your posts. And that's what warm ads is on Facebook and Instagram. Never stops. What's a boost? Good. I'm not, I don't even want to tell you. Just if you see it, run. <laughs> if you see it, run. But we, te we teach you how to do all these things, Deborah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. But they're, but they're great questions. You can, you can annoy people. The, 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 the other takeaway is you can annoy people with the um, emails for certain. Although you'd be surprised. Like most people ignore most emails. They just don't see them. They really don't, right? So you have, yeah. to, you have to send a bunch of them in today's day and age, and that's, that's just the world that we live in. In terms of Facebook and Instagram, the trap that you fall into there is like, every time I post something, everyone sees it. Nothing could be further from the truth. Every time you post something, no one sees it because we're all busy, because we're all on the couch watching our kids, yelling at our significant others, uh, looking at the mess, going, what am I going to do about this, stressing about this, watching cat videos, getting, getting, getting distracted, and your post was in there somewhere, and they did barely see it. So you have to, you have, they have to see you a whole lot, right? Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Who else, guys? Questions? 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 Tom Delaney is asking me, what's the pitch? Um, there really isn't a pitch. The, nec the next step is that we do like a, a demo process when it's, you know, it's a Zoom call and I'll get you next, Howard. It's a, it's a Zoom call like this that walks you through all the pricing, all the plans, all the bells, all the whistles, all the behind the scenes. Uh, you get to see everything and go through all of that. So that's what I would say on that. Um, Howard, you're up next. Go ahead, Howard. And then I'll get to you too, Terry. You'll need to unmute, Howard. I'll let you know when you get it. It's usually just clicking the mic icon once, bottom left-hand corner. Yep. My mistake. Sorry about that. Gotcha. Um, I, I don't even know how I found you. I was going through my spam folder, found a whole bunch of uh, AFS um, yes. stuff in there, and was clearing it out and jumped on this thing, and I, I don't even know who you are. Oh, so, wonderful. Are you Patrick? I'm Patrick, yeah. Oh, well, no wonder. I was, who's this guy Patrick? I got so many emails from this guy Patrick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, you're out of spam now, and you're going to come in my inbox. Wonderful. Like, I just joined, I just joined uh, Art Storefronts, and... Um, I'm just in the middle of like fighting to get all my work up. Mm -hmm. um, initially putting up, because I want to make large pieces and I'm trying to upload 18,000 pixel by 18,000 pixel mm -hmm. um, images and it's not working, of course. So we have, so this this session that we run are sessions that we run for people that are interested in art storefronts, not customers. And I'm just saying that to say that, you didn't know that. We have so okay. many We have so many sessions like this on the inside for you, it will blow your mind. 
and there's a session until you get your website live and best practices. It'll answer all of these things and the tech support will walk you through on Zoom. Wonderful. I'll have, I'll have um, April, I wonder what's the easiest way. April, will you just get his email and, and send him a link because everything has been going to spam. He doesn't know where to get started. You don't need to be uploading those 18,000 by 18,000, by the way. Um, our system our system will tell you, but d don't worry. We'll get you completely onboarded on all of that. And then I got to ask, is it South African? It sounds yes. South African. See? I, I know my accent. <laughs> This is for you. Yeah. How, how, what kind of, uh, I don't want to interfere no, with please, uh, please, please. Your, your, your life, but I've, I've had tons of eye surgery myself, so I appreciate uh, where you're at. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I had, I had a thing where, like, some, I mean, it just happened, but it, my eyelid wasn't closing all the way when I slept, and okay. so it was open, and come to find out when the eyeball doesn't have water all over it, it your tears just go all night long. And so yes. I would like wake up with like this crusty eye, but it started messing with my sleep. And so my doctor's like, okay, we'll get that all dialed in. So that's, that's what I had to do. Okay. Well, good luck with that. Yeah. It, uh, I've had the sunglasses on for two weeks. I'm, I probably have another week, <laughs> another week until they come off. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm feeling better. I'm feeling better. My wife, my wife has okay, been tremendous. Yeah. I just didn't want to sit on the side there on the, you know, and, and not uh, say anything. So, um, so I'm just getting used to the the rhythm of like this this fire hose of zoom calls and everything else. Oh, it's, it's brilliant though. Get 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 used to it because we don't we don't ever stop. We're just going to keep going and going and going and going and going and going and going because it's it's yeah. the path. But we have a ton of awesome for you inside. Your goal right now is just MVP minimum viable. No one knows what that is. I don't even know why I say that. Just yeah. get the damn website live as soon as possible, right? Like, we'll do. yeah, as soon as that's done, then we get it. Then we get into active marketing. Just as a final, how, how have you sold? Have you sold a decent clip of art up till now? No, not really. I mean, I've, I've been a graphic designer uh, most of my time. Mm -hmm. uh, I did very well as a fine artist years ago. Yes. But still not in, not well enough to, yeah. to make a living. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, as a, you know, I, I was veering off in another direction when I, uh, when I heard about art storefronts mm -hmm. and I thought, wow, these people will do everything for me. So, um, within, re within, master, within reason, within reason, I still, I reason, still need I mean, you to I do can, some marketing <laughs> and I can learn about marketing Yes, and focus on it. And, and the thing is, is the, is, is, um, is focus I uh -huh. find is, is very useful. Um, plus, um, having a community around me. Yes. Um, is is uh, really nice because it's as everybody knows it's a it's an isolated world. Yes. When to to work as an artist and um, it's really good to to run things by you know people who know what they're talking yes. about. Yes, and the community the community is important too. But well, you'll uh, you'll see me on the inside, and I I won't forget that accent. Great, Patrick. Yeah. Talk to you later. Thanks so much. My dad had a financial advisor that was from, from South Africa, Dimitri Holovit, and, and he had the thick accent too. I, I, I love that accent. Um, all right, Terry, you're up next. Go ahead, Terry. Yep, gotcha. He unmuted. Okay. Hi, Patrick. Hi. I am Terry. I am, um, I have been inquiring about y'all's business mm -hmm. when I look y'all up. Um, I am not the artist, okay. it's my brother. We're based here out of San Antonio, Texas. Okay. We, um, my brother is the artist. I run the business. Mm -hmm. I do, um, I'm a makeup artist. He's the artist in general. Okay. We've been um, inquiring about where to start as far as selling his art. Mm -hmm. We have a tattoo studio okay. called Puro Arte Tattoo Studio and Gallery. Okay. So um, my brother doesn't limit himself to being a tattoo artist. Mm -hmm. He is an artist. He does woodwork, airbrushing, mm -hmm. air. Um, he does oil painting. Um, he is. Uh, he'll, we also do um, custom metal cutouts. Cool. Right now we have a huge contract going um, back home. It's going to be eight by eight metal cutout. Not, it's not machine made. It's handmade. Whoa. Um, so we are, um, Where, where's back home? Just out of curiosity. Um, Dilly, Texas. Dilly, Texas. Got it. Dilly, Texas. Yeah. We'll be placing, um, eight by eight metal signs in the entrances of our hometown mm -hmm. on 35 going southbound and northbound. They're going to be 16 by eights. Cool. So we are wanting to, um, push our metal business more mm -hmm. on top of canvases um on top of oh, I other love it. work i love it and let me let me tell you the first most important thing you need to understand in this you can do it all 
because guess what? Your brother is the brand. Just as much as whether or not it's a tattoo or whether or not it's a canvas print or whether or not it's one of these metal, like people are resonating because they have him, right? Because he's good and he's got a product the market wants. And so you can 100% put all of those things on the site, okay? Um, mm -hmm. I, I hope they're all for sale in the tattoo parlor in addition to the tattoos. Um, well, when you walk in into our gallery, mm -hmm. we Maybe do have, uh, we have all, we have all of his art up. Mm -hmm. Um, I invite you to come visit, um, look us up on Instagram. Mm -hmm. It's, um, at puro arte dot S A T X. Puro like pure, puro. Um, puro arte. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. P U R O A R T E. Um, and, um, I stand my ground when I speak about my brother because I say he is more than just an artist um, and I'm trying to push him. He, um, so here I am. Mm -hmm. um, this is my second time being on live. Mm -hmm. um, I was supposed to talk to Patrick today to try to get in. I'm, pa I'm Patrick actually, by the way. Patrick, uh, I'm sorry, Brian. Right. I yeah, apologize. Yeah, 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 yeah all good, all good, all good. Um, Yes, it's just I've I've had other um, personal things going on. I run the business with my brother, and I'm trying to get it going. Mm -hmm. My question is: Yes, is that if we were to um, say get with um, art Store with friends. your mm -hmm. company, sorry, yes. um, and we were to sell based just somebody walking in and saying they want to purchase something. Mm -hmm. Do we would that be still a percent to y'all's company or would that be privately through my just my brother? It it depends on how you do it, right? Like we most of our customers do a combination of everything, right? So like if you have if you have a retail gallery and you have inventory in the retail gallery and somebody buys it, you can do it that way. Um, we have wholesale orders that you know you take the sale there in the gallery, you go to the website, you put in the wholesale order, the printer prints it, ships it boxes it, all that, there's no percentage on that. On sales directly that happen on the website, there is a percentage, but it's, it's just all how you decide to do it. Okay, and that's what I'm trying to get. Um, like I said, I run the business. Yeah, yeah. I'm the one who will be handling all that. My brother's just the artist. For sure. Um, he's, he's, he is extremely lucky to have you because every single solitary <laughs> artist on this call is like business partner and their eyes are going ding, 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 ding. That's what I want, right? Someone, yeah, I just want to create and let everyone else do everything else. Well, due to the fact that Adrian right now is presently working on mm -hmm. a client um, at our studio at the moment, it feels like Halloween because he's doing Michael Myers. Wow. Um, so um, I, I run the business. I'm trying to push his business. Mm -hmm. um, the art, the metal has gone there. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done a lot of our work at our hometown. And Adrian is basically has already has marked his landmark there at our hometown. What 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 percentage of the business is tattooing versus what percentage of the business is fine art sales? All the rest of them combined, 50, 50, 60, okay, so 40? Pre Presently, right now, I would say more. Um, I would say more eighty percent because 80 that's tattoos, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's because we're pushing, and that's because the demand in people wanting his art. Mm -hmm. He does realism is high like just this morning i spoke to like three clients um he'll be flying out to philadelphia in two weeks and he's already booked two days out of the three days so his tattooing is really in demand the art the metal work um i'm actually gonna set aside like three days just so he can start hand hand drawing these metal um um they're the 16 by eights just because we're wanting to get that that work done and start on other work mm -hmm. um so i he literally works every day he does not have a day off um but i um i just need to block his days for that for sure we um, can it's a no-brainer we can we can help you I'll, I'll i'll tell brian you popped onto the session it's he's in a good place too because 80 percent of our customers have full-time jobs and they're trying to make the art thing work 20% are full-time artists, more or less, right? And, you know, you can rely on the tattoo business and know that that's going to bring in the revenue that you need to give you the, you know, the air cover to be able to continue to grow the print business, which will take time, right? To continue to grow the metal business and anything else that he has going on in there. Um, so that's always a very, very good situation to be in, right? Um, you just understand that, like, 
the tattoos is within reason always going to be about trading dollars for hours, right? He needs to spend certain hours. There's only so many hours he can spend in a day. And yes, he can continue to raise prices and raise prices, but eventually you hit a wall there, right? So that business is sort of on its fixed trajectory. And he's looking at his life when he's in his 50s, 60s, 70s, or wherever he's at. He's like, I don't want to be doing tattoos all day anymore, right? So awesome. Get the art thing cooking. You can help him. We'll teach you what to do. Game on. Yes, that's what I want to get. I want to yep. get where um, I need. I do. Yep. I definitely hope yep. as far as the website and everything going on. But um, so that was my question. How did that work? So I guess I can get more into detail on how all that works once we get there. Yep. Cross Bri the bridge. Br Brian will walk you through all of it. You, you, get, you guys will be super stoked. I, I, I love hearing those stories, though. And, you know, it's funny. We have another big tattoo artist in here that just left a, a comment. Um, she was on here earlier, Katie. Um, I, wonder if, I wonder if those two know each other. Um, small world at the end of the day. But, yeah. Um, we'll get you sorted. I'll, 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 I'll tell Brian what the score is and, uh, and, and we'll see you in the, on the inside and start building this business. And just don't, Thank just don't, you. just don't, just don't go telling people that you're doing what you're doing for your brother and your brother's not having to do any of it. I have reputations to, to uphold, right? Everyone's going to start calling you and figuring out how, how the heck did this happen? Um, so don't, just don't no, tell no, anybody. Don't tell what, that I'm the one. Yes, that you're the one doing all of the work for an artist because they will all just instantaneously glom on you and say, how is that possible? What's, how is this working? How can I get in there? What is the business plan? Um, I have, well, I, have, I do it for him because he, that's what, that was our agreement. Our agreement was I would run his business. I would try to do as much as for him because as much as he would want to, Patrick, be listening to all this, he, have he just, he yeah, yeah. cannot, he does not have the time. These you are know, good he problems. Have, These are good problems to have, Terry. These are good problems to have. Yes. And yeah. that's where it's a team. That's right. It takes a team. And like, and you know what, um, Patrick, I want to give a shout out and say hi to all these ar people who are on live right now uh, in this um, video, because I always tell people that we're not the only ones. There's an abundance of an amazing artist. We just have to hang in there and learn and grow because it's a lot. It oh, takes yes. a village. It does take a so village. So we're just one. We're just one. And um, that's one thing that I tell other artists that come and say, you know, that a, the want, they even want Adrian to teach them how to do the metal cutout. And like, if mm -hmm. he's teaching me how to do it, you can learn how to do it. Yep. And he could start, <laughs> he could start selling courses on how to do it if he's so inclined. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much. Thanks yeah. for answering my questions. And I look forward and speaking to um, uh, Brian um, tomorrow. Wonderful. Thank you, Terry. Thanks. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly. Someone raised their hand and then it went down. So I don't know if you had a question that got answered or what. But Katie Katie asked me a question. She's been on here before, and this is this is actually an interesting one where she says she has a big email list of clients, and she's actually been a tattoo artist forever, and she's gonna branch out and do her, do her art. And she's worried about saying like, hey, uh, you know, I I've 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 been now you're saying cutting hair. It was it cutting hair or tattoos? Maybe it's both. Now I've been cutting hair. Now I'm gonna uh, start selling you art. There's there's some tactful and tasteful ways that you can do it, Katie. It's pretty easy actually. Um, you email everyone and say, hey, I'm going to be sending out some of my fine art stuff. Is that something you want to see? Um, I'll occasionally send it. If not, just re reply no, and I won't ever send you anything. Love you. Hope you're doing well. Let's catch up. Right? Done. One email takes care of it. If you really want to get tactical, and we can teach you how to do this, a lot of times when you have an email list that's stale and hasn't been warmed up and you haven't talked to it in a while, you know, to come right out of the blue and say, hey, I haven't emailed you in 10 years or asked how you're doing or cared what you're interested in, but check out my art and buy it. Right? That feels off. So what you do is you take the whole email list, you put it up into Facebook, Facebook turns it into an audience, you leverage Facebook and Instagram to show ads to it for a couple of weeks, they remember you exist, and then you send the email, which is really the smart and tactical way to do it. Um, certainly the way that I would recommend that you do it. So that's what I would say. But it's a good thing that you have that list. All right, Leonard, you're up next. Hi, uh, I just said, could you say something briefly about, uh, as an older artist, say something mm -hmm. about selling and concerns uh, with the relationship with museum and collections, uh, in other words, an inclusion and contributing to a larger art community mm -hmm. in a historical context. Mm -hmm. I, I still don't understand where the problem is in there. Are, is your concern that because you're in those groups that if they find out you start selling direct, they're going to be like, what are you doing? Mm, well, in, in relation to marketing, for example, just... Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think, you know, you're talking a lot about marketing and how to go about it yes. in a very straightforward way. Uh, that's mainly uh, leaning towards uh, selling the art. Um, 
if, for example, you sell a lot of art, but you also, uh, you know, you're concerned for having made some kind of contribution to the larger community if you feel that uh, the work is original, et cetera. Yeah. Something to that effect. All, all, all the marketing does is just amplify you and whoever you are and your integrity and your way that you look about things, right? Like uh -huh. the, the, the way the way that I look at the marketing is like, okay, you 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 have your thesis, right? You have your premise, the way you're approaching this and the way that you're presenting your work and who you are. All uh -huh. the marketing ensures is that people actually see it. Right. Right. Otherwise it's just locked in your head, right? And 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 no one really knows what's going on. So that's 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 all the marketing does in my estimation. It just it just amplifies whatever you're doing. Yeah. I, I guess I have a hard time still with all of the <laughs> the work that goes on in terms of the uh, social networking, et cetera, like that. Leonard, too. everyone does. Everyone does. Trust me. Yeah. Everyone does. It's, 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 you know, and, and I have very, very distinctive opinions on it, right? Like, you know, most people would call me a social media marketing guru and or Swami. Okay. Do you know how much I post personally on Facebook or Instagram? Uh huh. Nothing ever because secretly I am, I am, I am a troglodyte that, that, you know, wants to be a hermit living in my house and have no one have any idea what I'm doing. Right. Uh -huh. But you know, uh, if you, if you look at it in a different context, we're just fishermen. And if our job is to be fishermen, we get in the boat in the morning and we drive it to where the fish are. As fishermen of right now, we drive it to where the fish are. Oh yeah. And uh -huh. as of right now, the fish are on the social networks, right? Like, right. They're, they're extremely visual driven platforms, Instagram being the number one, Facebook being secondarily, where right. people show up to discover new and beautiful works and it's just how it works. And you know, right. what, you, what you'll find that's interesting and you wouldn't know the context of this right out of the gate, but one of the things that I cited earlier in the report was, or earlier in the presentation was the Art Market Report, which um, is put out by UBS Global and Art Basel. Uh -huh. And there's that one and then there's another one and the other one is put out by this insurer in london called the hiscox group and it, they've had these reports every single solitary year and every year on year and and i should say these people these reports only interview the top of the top art collectors period not not anyone buying stuff for two or three thousand dollars it's like fifty thousand dollar pieces hundred thousand dollar pieces and above right and all of them are talking about how instagram played a major role in their buying decisions major uh -huh. role, major role it's what I said earlier is just hundred percent true. It's like, it's, it's the LinkedIn for artists. Like, am I going to go to your Instagram profile and see all kinds of awesome? Yes or no. If not, then like, I'm going to be like, okay, well, what is this person doing? They're either not active or they're not taking their career seriously or da, 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 right. But if they are, then, you know, they're, they're on the up and up and that's, that's sort of the, the, the takeaway on it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you have to like it, Leonard. Doesn't mean I have to like it either, but we're fishermen. We got to go where the fish are. Yeah. Um, it the other thing is uh, about um, uh, just what you were saying earlier about collections, I think, too, about collectors. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's what was this, yeah, what else? I have one other thing I wanted to ask you. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I lost the thought at the moment. Sorry. I, I guess that's it. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you, Leonard. Right, thank you. If you think of it, Leonard, um, whatever it was, just raise your hand again. All good. Robert, you're up next. Go ahead, Robert. I, I've been taking pictures for probably 25 years, okay. but had no real intention of marketing or selling any of those initially. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> of late, I've had people asking where, if any of my stuff is for sale. Okay. So you, you just, just stop, stop, stop right Facebook. now. Stop, stop right now. When they ask if it's for sale. You immediately say, I take PayPal, cash, Venmo, check. Which piece do you want? I can show them to you right now. <laughs> it's not real. It's not real if, if, if you don't immediately go for the close in that situation, right? And, okay. and I, I, I just use that as, as, and I'm not trying to pick on you at all. I just use that as like a very, very important mental framework, right? Because a lot of people are like, people tell me I should buy my stuff. They want to buy my stuff all the time. Or I get a ton of likes on, on Facebook all the time or a ton of shares or a ton of comments or I've been in three jury dart shows and you know I won an award at the jury dart show and I'm like okay awesome if I come to your house right now pick you up and we drive down to the ATM machine show me the damn button on the ATM machine for jury dart shows likes comments shares or people tell me my work is awesome where can I buy it right the only thing that matters is the transaction 
Otherwise, they're fluffing your ego. So knowing that and having that in your mind, I think, is like a, a really, really important mental framework. Like, go for the sale immediately. And if they're not ready, if they're not ready to buy right now, go, okay, that's price too high for you. What would you be willing to pay? And then shut up and see what they say. And then you know instantaneously whether or not they're blowing smoke or whether they mean it, right? Like, I, you know, I, one, of the, one of the things that I, that I always advocate is like, you have to validate your art. And what does that mean? You have to sell your art to people not named mom, dad, brother, family, friends, right? Because they'll do anything. They'll lay down an oncoming traffic for you. They love you. But once you start selling to strangers, you know you have a product the market wants. Once you know you have a product the market wants, the equation calls for more eyeballs to the product and you'll sell more of it, right? And that just puts you on the path to go. So the, 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 the end of that rant, Robert, is if you, if you did prints back in the day, awesome, you're ready to go. If you didn't, do some prints on metal, acrylic, and canvas. Do a local show or fair in your hometown or whatever's easiest that you can get to and, and sit in a booth for eight hours a day or however long it goes, five hours, and see how many you can sell. If you can sell a ton, you got a business on your hand and it's go time, right? So if you have, haven't done any of that at this point, that's, that would be where you start? That's the shortcut, yeah. That's what I tell you to do instantaneously, straight up. You know, if you had a big social media following, I would say you could turn this thing on and do a live art show, kind of like I was showing earlier, right? But I'm assuming you don't. And to be honest with you, even if you do, I, I really prefer the in-person event because it gives you the instantaneous feedback you need, right? Okay. It's so important. And, 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 and to be honest with you, you know, there's no, there's, there's, there is no other step. That's the step before you do anything. Do not cross go. Do not collect $200. Do not worry about shipping. Do not worry about taxes. Do not worry about a logo. Do not worry about a bank account. Go to that thing. See if you can sell. If you can sell, then you have a product the market wants. Then you have a marketing problem like all the rest of us. <laughs> you just got to start marketing. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. All right, what else? Questions? Again, Daniel, you're the only one with the camera on, so you're the only one I can pick on. I don't know if you have a question or not. It's okay if you don't. Um, I'm just picking on you because your camera's on. I mean, that's just what I do. Um, yeah, you know, what I said earlier, and if, if any other questions come along, please do let me know, is right now is a great time to get started, and don't take it as a sales pitch. The, the, the message about getting started is this business fundamentally at the end of the day is 100% about regular marketing and then a sales event. Regular marketing and then a sales event. Rinse and repeat. It goes that way all year long. And these opportunities constantly come up on the calendar. And you got to seize them. You have to seize them because they're the motivation that you need to take a step and for things to change. Otherwise, what ends up happening? It doesn't matter whether you sign up with us. Yeah, I want to do this. I really do want to do this. I want to take my business seriously. I want to start taking some forward progress and some steps. In the minutes, turn into hours, turn into days, turn into weeks. How's that business going? Have you taken any positive steps? No, you haven't, right? You've been sitting on the sidelines. So it's one of the, it's one of the, the constant things that we're doing for our members is motivating them to say like, look, you keep talking about this and you keep thinking about this and you keep contemplating and you keep losing these opportunities that are on the calendar, right? Opportunities to run sales, opportunities to piggyback your business on, on prevalent holidays that are coming up. Mother's Day is a big one. Father's Day is a big one. Valentine's Day is a big one. Q4, Prime Day. I could go on and on and on. And there's three big ones coming up in the next 30 days. So the time to start is now. If you, if you want to give us a look, awesome. Request a demo. We have a crazy sale going on. Um, there'll be links in the chat, links that I'll, that I'll send you. Um, and, and, you, and you can get in, get going, get your site up, and get a sale in the water. But I want you ultimately to take action. I don't want you to sit on the sidelines anymore and let another day go by and let another day go by and let another day go by, right? Like, I, I, I love motivating you guys to take action. And, and, I, and I honestly mean it. Like, just, just you, have, you have to start taking some positive steps. You can't keep contemplating it and thinking about it and sitting on the sidelines, right? You got to get going. So, all right, Leonard, remember this question. Go ahead, Leonard. Uh, yeah, I don't mean to put you on the spot. No, I really like please, the present. Please, please. Uh, I love being put on the spot. Uh, <laughs> just quick, quick, simple question. What's different about store for art storefronts and uh, your competitors? We don't really have any competitors. We don't have any competitors. When you, when you see the whole product from top to bottom, Mm -hmm. We don't have any competitors. Like w w there are there are other website providers out there, um, a myriad, right? An entire you know, yeah, galaxy tried, galaxy of different ones. And yeah. you know, if I was the genie that came out of the lamp right now, and I said, Leonard, don't worry about it, I got you. Uh, I will take your website and I will move it to any website you want. Boom! I'll snap my fingers. It's done. It'll be perfect. Do you know what's going to change in your business? What's that? N nothing. <laughs> because you don't have a website problem. 
You have an eyeball problem. You have an attention problem. You have a marketing problem, right? I, so art storefronts, do we have competitors in terms of website solutions? A myriad. Do we have competitors in, 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 into the core part of our product, which is we're essentially a postgraduate university that teaches people how to grow businesses, to grow business, to grow creative businesses, both through the business techniques, tactics, and the marketing techniques, tactics, and it never stops. Learning never stops. So it, 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 the easiest way to think about it is it's a graduate school and, and, and there's no graduates. But that's the level of education you get. And when you dive into the, like our product at its core and everything that we teach you to do and how we teach you to do it and the support systems that we have in place and the constant meetings, the constant classes, the homework, the calendar, all of the various different things, we don't have any competition. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Sounds arrogant, but it's true. Doesn't mean we're only gig in town though, right? Like, you know, there's lots of places that you can go and do it. I mean, ultimately, ultimately, I leave all of these sessions just saying, if I can get all of you guys just motivated to start taking some positive steps forward and start treating your business seriously instead of treating it like a New Year's resolution, because that's what all artists and photographers do. They take the, I'm going to grow the business slash I'm going to start marketing slash this is going to be my year portion of the business like a New Year's resolution. It's the gym membership. You're going four days a week in January. Uh, by the time March comes around, you haven't been once all month, right? And that's how it goes. And it's a, it's a vicious cycle because it's rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat year after year after year, right? You have to start taking action. You have to start taking the marketing seriously. And I'm here to tell you, if you do, there has never been a better opportunity to be an artist. And I say that because the old ways of selling, which I find to be exploitative, sorry if there's any gallery owners on here, where you take a 50% haircut and have no idea who's buying your work, you don't need them anymore. The, the, this industry is going through its, and has been for the last couple of years, its blockbuster Netflix moment, its Uber taxi cab moment, right? And so if you're willing to deal with the pain, and let me tell you, the first couple of years are pain, okay? I don't sugarcoat it or BS you on that in the slightest. You have a ton of stuff you have to learn. You have to start doing all of these various different marketing activities and getting better at them and getting a handle on it. Da -da 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 -da. But once you do, the reward on the other side of it, it's never been better for artists. You can completely control your business. You guys have a business in such that you can create the product. You don't have to go to China for some injection molding or, or have 3,000 items on a shelf. You can create the business, ship everything from your house, do it all out of your house if you're so inclined, and really build a career out of it. And I think that's fantastic. So it doesn't mean it's easy, but it is fantastic. Better than it's ever been. All right, I'm, I've talked myself out of steam. Um, any final questions before I go? I had to do one earlier today too, and I'm, I'm zoom fatigued out. I'm done. Call an uncle. I'm waving the white flag, but I would love to see you guys, um, on the inside. No, you do not need an email list, Robert. It's helpful if you do have one, but email lists are, they're all built. They're all built the same guys. One, one email at a time. And in, in, in the next 30 days, three big art selling times, time to get going. If you feel like, you know, that, that's the other thing I'll say as a final, like, when I say I've been doing this for a long time, I've been doing it for a long time now. And doing it for a long time, it, it, solving this problem, how to build an art of photography business and what it looks like, there's not a lot of people out there trying to do it because it's not a very lucrative industry is, is what most people would say, right? There's a reason there's a term starving artists. When you've been doing it as long as we have, we thought earlier on, like the number one thing that we can do as a business is provide the greatest blueprint the most amazing marketing education. If we do that, our customers will succeed and thrive. Come to find out a couple of years into that grind that the emotional support, the encouragement, the, the combination of carrot and stick, the poking and prodding, the getting you unstuck when you have tech issues, the putting you in a group in video sessions with your peers, some of which are seeing success, showing you that you can do it too, is just as important as the marketing education. There are two sides of the coin that gives you the greatest chance of success. So that's what I'd say. Don't let, don't, don't let another 30 days go and another 30 days go and another 30 days go. Get going. All right, guys. We leave it there. I'm exhausted. I appreciate all of you. Hey, I'm going to send you the replay with all the links after the fact. Um, I think you guys will really enjoy some of the stuff. And you can click and watch the videos and do, do whatever you got to do, right? Um, so that's what I'd say. As soon as the video is done, you'll see that email from me in an hour. And then you'll see thousands of emails from me after the fact because I email too much. I apologize. I apologize, really. I'm trying to get help. I need to seek help. I really do. But thanks, guys. Have a great rest of your day.